Welcome back. He's a comic who transformed rage into hilarity. Hailed as the king of rant, Louis Black returns to the Florida Theater Friday, December 15th for his Off the Rails tour, and he joins us now by phone. Welcome to First Coast Connect, Louis Black. No, oh, my pleasure to be there. Hey, we're thrilled to have you. So you've had such a, a varied and storied career. You've done movies, television, stand-up. How do you define your place in the comedy landscape? How do I define it? I was, I was just lucky. I got People thought I was funny. <laughs> That's really my place in the comedy landscape. Uh, I, I, it was kind of, it, it isn't where I expected to be. So it's always I wake up kind of going, wow, I can't believe this is, this has uh, been going on this long. Because I was, I got, I started as a, uh, I was in theater. I thought I was going to be a playwright. I thought really I was going to end up teaching theater. So, uh, this has all been spectacular. When did you realize that you were funny? And, like, was your early humor, was it this kind of rage-based humor, or was it something different? Well, no, when I was a kid, it was all sarcasm, because uh, my mother was had a really, was was good at it. My father, uh, my, my mother was really sarcastic and funny. My father read books and uh, that made him laugh, and those, you know, like, like Catch-22, he... He's the one who basically told me to read it. So I got a, a bit from them. My friends were, were very, very funny. But it was all about sarcasm and this is you know, and things that were silly and then um it wasn't until um uh got into college and uh, and started uh, you know, telling stories and stuff to my friends about things that were happening and uh, that kind of evolved eventually um, I was doing stand up on the side. I was doing really just doing stand up for a way to kind of write things and get them out there. But it, once I kind of got on stage and was doing it regularly, I uh, I realized that uh, I was uh, had a friend who told me, uh, you know, you're really angry. You got to yell. And I was always a little worried about that <laughs> as, a, as a way to kind of in, ingratiate myself to audiences. But I was I was funniest when I was angry. It's really cathartic to watch, you know, as somebody who likes to channel a little bit of anger myself. I, I really find it, you know, enjoyable, that fury. What's been funny was early on, uh, kids kids would, who, and it was the kids who kind of found me because of the Daily Show. Early on, kids would say, you know, uh, you're just like my dad, only you're funny. <laughs> I come from an alt weekly background. I feel like as a comic, you were always really available to do interviews with alternative weeklies in cities around the country. Do you have a sort of a special connection there, or is it just love of the underdog? The, the alternative papers were really the the strong local voices uh, in terms of um, you know uh, getting you know in, in terms of dealing with what was going on uh, in whatever area I was uh, visiting. So there were. You know, from the from the very beginning, it was uh, it was kind of like uh, it's it kind they all kind of spun out of the Rolling Stone when the Rolling Stone was really the Rolling Stone, and there was a real um, energy to that. Uh, there was a real energy to those uh, publications that I really enjoyed, and and like me, they were you know, basically going. Basically, what I really liked about them was, was that something would happen this that week, and the paper's responses, those alternative papers' responses, were kind of, "You've got to be kidding me!" In your latest special, uh, tragically, I need you. You actually talk about the fact that you're making jokes, and people, if they don't like the jokes, they can just not laugh, right? Right. That's it. It's that simple. That's the fastest way to get to a comic. You know. That was really the fastest way to do it. It's kind of like um, the Will Smith thing. If he had just allowed that that uh, that joke, which was a bad joke that uh, Chris Rock had said, and allowed the the room to uh, deal with it, the room would have done it and made and made Chris go oh. And and then what would have been funny is Chris's reaction to that. What is your favorite venue for comedy, whether you're consuming it or, or producing it yourself? Do you, it, you know, you did the Jon Stewart show for a long time. You've done a lot of TV. You do stand up, you know, wonderfully and continually. You've been doing it for like 30 some years now. Yeah. Which do I like? The, what I like the most is stand up because it's, 
I'm in the, it's independent of everything. I don't have to worry about an editor. I don't have to worry about like the daily show. They, they really told me what it was that uh, I was going to talk about. Um, so, I mean, I get to decide what I talk about. I don't have to, I'm, I don't have to deal with the producers. Well, you know, I'm not sure. I, I enjoyed doing the root of all evil, but we had to deal with comedy central and there was, they would come on every day and, uh, and kind of give us, uh, their their take on things and I but I had no interest in their take on things but stand up really was the the place that I felt the freest and if I was offered the great thing about stand up if I was offered something uh, in a, a movie or a, a TV show and I didn't want to do it I didn't have to because I could go on the road and when I cross a line I've always done this when I've kind of gone too far I'll say I've gone too far I don't need the audience to tell me I already know. You have been voted um, 51st out of the 100 greatest stand-up comedians of all time by Comedy Central. And I, I wonder how you take that ranking. Um, does that mean anything to you? Obviously, you're you know loved and admired by your fans, but does a ranking like that mean anything to you personally? Well, I mean, it's kind of, if I did it again, I'd probably drop down. Because <laughs> um, I, I fade from view, but uh, it's, it meant a lot at the time, and uh, but you know I take it with a grain of salt. I'm just glad to to be mentioned uh, with the people I've been mentioned with. You know, there, there's a lot of comics I like. There were some comics who weren't on that list that I thought should be on that list, and and I know in the end I've been, you know, it's the one thing you learn from uh, being in this entertainment business is it's it, it has to do with timing, and if the if and I've been lucky, you know. Uh, I, I kind of came along at the right place at the right time. I, nobody knew who I was, and then I, you know, and then I uh, started to do it. And they and Conan came on the air, and he got it. So you know, I couldn't get on the other shows. He put me on, and then uh, and the and then Comedy Central put, put me on. So and it had to do with the timing, and that's that's been huge for me. And so I take it with you know that I ended up on the list is really dumb luck. <laughs> what is, what makes you laugh? Like, what was the last time you just completely lost it? And who makes you laugh like that? Well, Kathleen Madigan is a good friend, and she makes me, I think she's one of the, I think she is the funniest person now working, and she really makes me laugh. I never can remember what it is that sets me off, but she, she always kind of knocks me out. And, uh, I mean, there's a whole bunch of, uh, David Tell makes me laugh really hard, I, I, um, and, and I could probably could go on and name a, another ten. There's a Ted Alejandro uh, is uh, really uh, is an, should be known better. He opens for Jim Gaffigan, and uh, from time to time he's just great. He really makes me laugh. But John Oliver, John Oliver's stand up really makes me laugh. Is there yeah. any like common commonality among those comedians that you? find particularly funny like is it something about their delivery their style um there's no, there's not really commonality i mean uh david just kind of they all kind of in a way except they they cross a line in their own fashion uh, and they all have a view a point of view that is is kind of like so they you all have a really strong point of view that i will say and it makes for, uh, and when you do, it really makes for great comedy. So you're coming to Jacksonville next week, um, and that's excellent. I, anything that you uh, that people can expect from your show? What, what kind of themes are you talking about? Any kinds of topical stuff? Yeah, and I'm talking a lot about Florida. <laughs> so, yeah. so, no subject matter there people. in Florida. I mean, it's really dry stuff, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, very dry. Yeah, you guys banning books. I mean, you can't read all of the, the, the Shakespearean play in a classroom. What planet are you on? That's incredible. Greatest writer of plays. One of the greatest writers ever. Okay, and and they're acting as if kids are going to again get over sex by reading Romeo and Juliet. What? Are you serious? Go ahead. Yeah, every one of those schmucks who thinks that that it's a uh, it, it's it, it, kids can't read it because of the sex in it, I dare them 
to go to actually read that stuff aloud and explain what it is that is so brilliant about it. No kid after reading Romeo and Juliet has ever said, boy, I got to go hump now. Uh uh-uh. Louis Black, thanks so much for this conversation. Well, it was an absolute pleasure. I enjoyed it. And, um, and when, uh, if, you, if you guys ever want to talk to me, just give a yell, okay? Will do. Thanks so much. You can see Louis Black in Jacksonville Friday, December 15th at the Florida Theater. Tickets are still available at floridatheater.com or by calling 904-355-2787.